Hello and welcome to Friday Night Live. I'm Pastor Daryl. Thank you so much for being uh, here on tonight. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, continuing the Fruit of the Spirit series. Uh, I am joined by Lady Tammy. I was having a um, goof moment right there because <laughs> um, I was asking what was the next Fruit of the Spirit in the King James Version because um, I don't want to give my version. But if you have it, um, I believe that it's goodness. I believe that it's goodness. But we'll, we'll check it out in a minute. So anyway, so thank you for being here with us tonight. Thank you for um, praying for us and supporting us. I want to say that first of all. We thank you, thank you, thank you for all the support, all the prayers. We can feel the prayers. It pushes us to do what God has us to do. So our announcements are as follows. As we already know, the two ebooks, the Acceptable Prayer, as well as the 30-Day Journal is on Amazon. Make sure that you go there and purchase that and get that and add that to your library if you mm -hmm. have not gotten it. Also, Oh, I don't have a t-shirt with me tonight, but we do know Save Girls Rock soon to come is the Saved Men Rock t-shirts. We'll let you know when those are available. Inbox us and let us know. This Friday, um, I'm sorry, this Saturday, we're on Friday right now. Saturday is going to be the Saturday sit down right here on the Facebook page Amen. at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is going to be, um, the subject is going to be finish strong. So you're going to see all three of us on um, tomorrow strong. finishing strong on Saturday sit down with Pastor, myself, as well as Dr. Love. So I can't wait for you guys to be there. I can't wait to get to talking about it. Amen. And then last but not least, the Momentum church online campus is having a meet and greet on october 2nd which is next saturday at 7 p.m eastern standard time it's going to be on zoom the flyer is up now so you can get the zoom meeting uh code id and the password mm -hmm. we'll meet you there we had a great time with those that came on with us last, last week, week. Yeah. it was great we we played games we got to know each other and there were some prizes given out. It was great. So meet us there. If you know someone that is looking for a church home, not in the traditional way, but online, still serving the same God, preaching the same word that you hear on Winning in Prayer, mm -hmm. meet us on the Momentum Church online campus Facebook page. I got it right tonight. Thank God I got it right. Um, so meet us there, 7 p.m., um, we will be in the meet and greet 7 p.m. next Saturday on the 2nd. So I thank God for being here. Thank God for you all that's here. Like, share, and comment tonight. I'm ready. So we're talking about gentleness tonight. I said kindness the other week, last week, but it's gentleness in the King James Version. She said version. kindness because that's what her version, my version of the Bible says. That. says. Mm -hmm. I have a new King James Version. Classic so. says gentleness. <laughs> so we're you. gonna go with gentleness. Gentleness, yeah. Yes. So listen, we're gonna we're gonna be talking about gentleness on tonight. Listen, I don't know about you, but I have thoroughly enjoyed going mm -hmm. through uh, the fruit of the spirit, getting to know a little bit more about each one. But I want to remind you before we get started that it's a package deal. Mm -hmm. uh, the fruit of the spirit is uh, evidence. Uh, evidence of change. It's it's they are the characteristics of God. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I said before, to be absent of one is to be absent of all. It's a package deal. Uh, package deal. It's it's uh, it's the spirit of God living on the inside of you. But then it's the characteristics. It's God's personality. It's mm -hmm. his it's his traits living on the inside of you. So those traits uh, of God's character should show up. Yes. On the outward outward part of our lives and our mm -hmm. relationships Man. uh in, in our walk in our talk and mm -hmm. how we deal with folks and so gentleness way. literally has everything to do with how we engage others with our words mm -hmm. and our responses yes. so gentleness is softness of action or effect it's showing care and respect for others in the way that you act and speak and again, it has everything to do with how we engage others with our words and our responses. Yes. I like it also because some of the synonyms for gentleness is flexibility, mm. uh, understanding, and thoughtfulness. Think about that. Yes. Gentleness is flexibility, understanding, and thoughtfulness. You know, some of us, we, we aren't flexible about anything. Mm. We're, we're rigid. We're set in our ways. Mm. 
uh, we're, not, we're not willing to try to understand another person's perspective. Yes. Uh, and we certainly aren't that thoughtful. But on tonight, we're talking about being gentle. <laughs> and so being gentle, a part of gentleness is being flexible. It's being understanding and thoughtfulness. So our first scripture tonight is coming from Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 in the ESV. And it says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. He says, for I am gentle and lowly and I'm humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. I believe this is one of the greatest examples of, of uh, what gentleness is. It says, take my yoke. Upon. Now, you know, a yoke, when they put a yoke on an animal, it's to uh, restrict their movements and to have control. But he says, take my yoke upon you. He said, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not here to control you. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you something. When you go, when you go to do something wrong, God is not going to handcuff you. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. not going to handcuff. He says, take my yoke upon you. Learn yeah. from me. Uh, for I'm gentle. I'm gentle. I'm not here to drive you like a, like they call a yoke of oxen. I'm not here to drive you. Right. I'm not here to violate your will. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to handcuff you, but I am gentle. Learn of me. Yes. I am gentle, yes. and you'll find rest for your soul. Yes. So it's me, it's me now? It's you All now. All right, it's not on me. So you have your definition, and this is the definition I have of gentleness. Sensitivity of disposition mm -hmm. and kindness of behavior founded on strength and promoted by love. Sensitivity of disposition. Sensitivity, that means you're sensitive to people. Mm -hmm. You're sensitive to their situations. You're sensitive to what what are they, what they are dealing with. Mm -hmm. sensitive, sensitivity of disposition and kindness of behavior. I'm going to be kind because I'm sensitive <clears throat> of what you're going through. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be kind in behavior because I understand I can relate to what you're going through. It's founded on strength, mm -hmm. which means that I I don't have to fear my um what I want to say. Um my uh, I don't know. I, I I'm trying to think of the word to say, but anyway, I, I'll think of it in a minute. Founded okay. on strength and prompted prompted by love. Okay. Founded on strength, so I don't have to fear that because I'm giving you so much kindness that you will abuse that. Founded on strength, I will give it to you because I understand sensitivity. I understand, and I'm going to be kind to you, and I don't want. I, I shouldn't have to worry about you taking advantage of me being kind to you. Yeah. So our job is to be kind. Our job is to be sensitive. Mm -hmm. Our kind is to love. Our kind is to be to be someone's strength. So uh Psalms 1835. She a uh, God God is a shield. He's a God of provision. That's what that verse is. Mm -hmm. Gentleness is his love for us. He's gentle to us. Yes, there's a God of judgment and yes, there's a God of correction, but there is a God of gentle and Psalms 1835, which I'll go to it and read it. I don't have my um pad up like Pastor Pastor got his pad up tonight. He's all techie tonight. What? 1835. It says, You have also given me the shield of your salvation, which means you protected me. Your right hand has held me up, your gentleness has made me great. So we're saying that God is our shield, He's the sh our provision, He's gentle in what He does for us. Yeah, listen, guys, I want you to realize really before we really get off into this, that gentleness, again, love is the foundation. Out of love mm -hmm. flows gentleness. Mm -hmm. Gentleness, I want to remind you, it's softness of action or effect. And it has everything to do with how we engage others with our words and our responses. So we're not talking about you being a wimp. We're not talking about you being a pushover. But think about it. God, God, God isn't uh, 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 what you call a uh, um, he doesn't come in and strong arm his way into our lives. Right. Uh, the script, scripture says it, it's, it's through love and kindness that he draws us. Yes. He gently woos us. Mm -hmm. He doesn't beat us over our head. Uh, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't come in with a lot of noise, mm -hmm. but he's gentle in his dealings with us. Right. He's gentle in his dealings with us. Even if we go wrong, 
uh, you know, the enemy wants to convince you that God's going to, you know, knock you across your head. He's going to try to destroy. He's still gentle. Even, even if we fall, he's still gentle in his right. dealings with us. Right. And one thing I like, he doesn't, he doesn't put your business on blast. Mm. <laughs> Never. Why? Because he, he's a gentleman mm. and he deals with us gently mm. in all situations. He's flexible. Uh, he's flexible sometimes when we're not flexible. Yeah. He's understanding uh, when we're not understanding. He's thoughtful when we're not thoughtful. Yes. So I really want you guys to understand that this, this gentleness that we're talking about tonight, it has everything to do with how you're engaging with others. How do you respond when someone says something that you don't like? Do you fly off a handle? Do you immediately uh, curse them out? Uh, do you do you immediately just just drive off the rails and, 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 and go into attack mode? Because I want you to understand, that's not the makeup of one that's saying that they are a believer. That's not the makeup of, mm. of, of, of one that is naming the name of Christ. Yeah. You don't have the right to just go off and do and say anything you want. Right. You know, I I, I tell my wife, um, I I I'm always I always try to be cognizant when even when I'm out in the community and I'm taking care of business of how I handle myself. Now, you know, most people say if the church folks not around, your pastor's not around, you can do what you want to do. Mm. But no, I live my life. Mm. Uh, in such a way as to, I know that I have someone to answer to. Yes. And so just because I think I'm big enough and bad enough, I can do what I want, uh, say what I want. I still am not free to do that. Mm. I still have someone to answer to. Man. And so while I'm at the drive through while I'm at the red light, while I'm driving down the street, right. while I'm conducting business, I now filter what I say. Mm. Now, I'll be honest, there was a time I didn't have a filter and didn't want one. And I, I took pleasure in getting getting folks told at the drive through window mm -hmm. for messing up my order. Mm -hmm. But there's no way that I would ever make it uh, to be what God is calling me to be and, and feel like I'm free to, to act and do as I please because I feel like I'm big enough to. Right. Nah. No, we all have someone to answer to. Yes. And so that's how I live my life now. You have are there times you're going to have to bite your tongue because oh you're God. gentle? Yes. 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 Sometimes you have to bite your tongue if you want to to protect relationships. Mm. Sometimes you can't say what you want to say. Nah. And, and and you and it may be right. But that other person may not be mature enough to oh, come on, saints. Yes. Come on, saints. Man. Come on. We, we, we got to grow up. Man. We got to grow up. You're not free to act and do as you please just because you think you can. Yes. We're talking about gentleness yes. on tonight. Yes. And God do, God is so gentle with us mm. because he loves us so much. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And I, I, I want to challenge you on tonight. If you say you're you, if you say you love that person, you, you should be a little more gentle. Yes. A whole lot more gentle. Man. And as, as my wife has been saying here for the last few months, you need to extend some grace. Gotta give grace. Give that person a, uh, the opportunity to be able to mess up and you still be there loving. Yes. Uh, and you don't have to worry about the relationship ending. Extend some grace. Man. Do you extend grace? Are you gentle enough to extend some grace? Yes. Are you gentle enough? To apologize even when you're not wrong. Yes. Go already God. Amen. Go 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 right here. So I I can say that just because you're an adult, yes, does not give you a right to say what you it need does want, not what you want to say. Go it does God. not give you a right. Do you know how many times that Jesus probably wanted to strike out and say whatever he felt like saying mm -hmm. because of what was going on or what they were doing or how they were doing and reacting to him? Mm -hmm. If he would have done that, then it wouldn't have been an example for us. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been an example of replacing our will for his yes, will. Yes, so yes. we have to be careful. I learned a valuable lesson this past week. I have to be careful how I say it. Not everybody mm -hmm. is mature enough to take what I say, even though it may be correct mm -hmm. and it may be right, 
but I, again, I'm growing just like you are growing. You are maturing. You are finding God more in every, every way of your life. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that when you are, when you are giving your opinion, that it's God's opinion. It's not your opinion. It's not how you should feel. It's not, well, if you ask me, you know, you ask me, so I'm going to give you the truth. Well, yes, you can give the truth, but it is a way that you give it. It's not the way you should not be giving it because you're upset with the person or angry with the person. You should be giving um, the tone that you would want to hear, that you would want to receive. And yes, Jennifer, I used to be very guilty of a very sharp mouth. And so I do know what it is to be delivered from that just being downright, I'm going to say what I want to say and it hurt people's feelings and it ruins relationships. So we have to make sure with our words, with our actions, that we're being gentle, that we're being sensitive, that we're showing the strength and it's coming out of love. Mm -hmm. It's not coming from a place where I'm gonna get you told and I'm gonna tell you right now because you're not doing it right. Well, why don't you do it this way? That is not how you approach people that you are trying to show who God is and a different side of God. So I'm going to go to Isaiah 8 and 6. This is how your words should sound. This is how it should feel to people. I uh, compared it to hearing the rain outside. Mm -hmm. It's soothing um, or having someone touch with a soft hand, those kind of things. So Isaiah 8 and 6, it says, in as much as these, as these people refused, which is the children of Israel, the yes. waters of Shiloh that flow softly and rejoice in resin and in Rimla's sun. So the waters in Shiloh were, was a very uh, shallow brook and it flowed really softly. You couldn't hear it, but it was very soft water. And that's what our actions and that's what our words should be. They should be soft. They should be able to be digested. They should be. They should feel good to the ear. They should be feel good to the touch. Yeah. We should not just be reckless with our mouths. We have to be gentle. The water flowed gently through the brook so that they could grab a drink of water. So we need to be gentle mm -hmm. with our witness so that they can grab on to what we are doing and what we are trying to achieve and show them who God is. Yeah, Titus 3 and 2 says that Thank you, Lord. Uh, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Let me read it Amen. again. To speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, Mm. And to show perfect courtesy towards all people. Again, gentleness is every has everything to do with how we engage others with our words and, and our actions, but more so with our words. Amen. More so with our words. Amen. Uh first Peter 3:15 it says, uh, but in your hearts honor Christ, the Lord is holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone. Who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yes. yet do it with gentleness and respect. So this verse really tells us to, to defend without being defensive. Yes. Defend without being defensive. Uh, you are to uh, make someone aware of why you believe what you believe. Yes. Without being uh, offended or, or going on the defense. Uh, whether they believe what you're saying or not, the word of God is already settled. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to get your feathers ruffled because, you know, they're they're not accepting what you're saying. Again, yes. we're supposed to defend without being defensive. Yes. So also on that point, mm -hmm. it leads me to gentleness can be defined as a willingness to yield. Mm -hmm. I like as that. As a willingness to yield. So Jeremiah 11, 19, it says, but I was like a docile lamb brought to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. I did not know that they had this devised schemes against me saying, let us destroy the tree with its fruit oh, wow. and let us cut him off from the land of the living <clears throat> that his name may be remembered no more. And this is Jeremiah. His life is being threatened at this point, mm -hmm. but he still was gentle with his words, gentle with his actions. Even though his life was in danger, mm -hmm. he's still saying, I'm going as a lamb. I'm going to, I'm going to let you do whatever you need to do. And you're going to try to wipe me off the earth, but you can't because I belong to God for mm -hmm. one for second he has my back but I'm still going to be gentle I'm still going to speak nicely if you go ahead and read the rest of the uh, passage he's still encouraging the body of 
and still encouraging the body, which is Israel at that time. Mm -hmm. The Israelites were going to kill him because they didn't like what he said. They didn't like how he reacted. They reacted wrongly to because he was a prophet. And they're he would plotting, say they're plotting, they're plotting against, to kill him. They're plotting because against. of what he's given, because God's given him the word for them. And they're plotting against him, yet he didn't raise his voice in anger. Time, didn't get he angry. didn't raise his voice to say, uh, y'all don't know who y'all messing, messing with. with. <laughs> I know they ain't I know they ain't plotting against me. Yes, he said they were gonna cut cut me down, cut him off from the land of the living. In other words, they were, they were gonna, gonna kill, kill him. him. They were gonna kill him so nobody would remember him because they did not like what he was saying. He was a prophet of God mm -hmm. and he had to bring the word of God to them, but he was even willing to be quiet and still be gentle at this moment Woo. Now, what, what, what do we do what, what good would it have done for mm. him to how do we react to, to really that? to get in his feelings raise his voice and mm. start swearing mm. and, and 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 talk about how they y'all you know y'all gonna kill me what good would that have done at that point? not not at all i, I believe at that point it would have, it would have just it would have turned the situation into something else, and they yes. probably would have killed him yes yes at that point yes Yes. So he, I mean, he goes on to the, uh, the next verse. If you read it, it talks about, he's saying, yes, God, you're the God of judgment, but mm -hmm. hold off, mm -hmm. hold off. Don't, don't, don't let them kill me, but then don't let your judgment reign here either. Cause mm -hmm. they're not really understanding what they're doing. And just as Jesus did the same in the new Testament, he said, they don't really understand who I am, but don't, don't judge them. Let me come in their stead. Let me be their intercessor. Let me stand in their in 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 the gap for them and intercede. Don't destroy them. Just just let me stand there. Let me be the sin. I mean, are offering. you are you gentle enough tonight to pray for somebody that has, that has plotted against you? No, my. Plotted for your demise. Mm -hmm. Are you gentle enough to stand in the gap? Because that's mm -hmm. what Jeremiah did. Yes, he stood in the gap for yes. them. He he he, did. he he interceded for them. He did, and they wanted to wipe him off the face of so the they earth. They wouldn't even know his name no more. But my we, God. you know, sometimes you know, if if somebody don't uh, speak to us. Right when we go in the church, you know, we've been out of shape and we want to stay at home and, yes. and we're not going back to the church because they didn't speak right. I mean, come on, we, we got to grow up. We do. We got to grow up. We Proverbs do. 15 1 says, A soft answer, mm. a soft answer, just like Jeremiah, a soft answer turns away wrath, mm -hmm. but a harsh word stirs up anger. And again, if he would have if he would have given harsh words, it wouldn't have done anything except stir the pot. Amen. Amen. Except stirred the pot. Well, see, we have to learn. Oh we have to learn Jesus. to be wise with our words. Yes. And if we can be wise with our words, as a, a lot of times we can avoid a lot of situations. Um, a yes. lot of times relationships, relationships can be spared. Yes. If we can learn how to give a soft answer. Yes. Instead of a harsh one. Yes. If we could learn how to to give words that are that are seasoned, mm, help us, Lord. We can spare feelings. The relationship can still be intact. Yes. And we can go on. But yes. so many times we think we have to defend ourselves. Yes. Yes. So I've many times we that. think we have to mm -hmm. defend ourselves. Yes. And when, when I'm gonna remind you that the Bible lets us know that Jesus said not a word in His defense. My God, not one. He mm. said not a word. And I believe a lot of times it's because of our mouths that we can't get to that next level that we so Jesus. desperately want to get to. Help us, Lord. We say we want to grow. We say we want to go, but we can't because we cannot, we cannot control our mouths. Because the moment someone says anything wrong, we feel like it's our guy, our, our job to snap them up, get them told, make sure they know how we think, we mm -hmm. feel. And, and, you know, My they ain't going right. to talk to me like that, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. My way is right. Yours is not. Glory you're going to listen to me. Glory to God. You're going to listen to what I say. So, again, gentleness can be defined as willingness to yield. Willingness Isaiah 53, yield. 7 says he was oppressed, which you just talked mm -hmm. about. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Now, this is Isaiah oh talking about Jesus Prophecy. before he came on the earth, before he was even alive. It says, yet he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter mm -hmm. and a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Gentleness can be defined as willingness to yield. Mm -hmm. Your opinion is not always what people need to hear. What you have to say 
is not always right. Right then, right there, I got to get it out. It's my first thing on my mind. We're not showing any gentleness. Mm -hmm. We're not yielding to other people's feelings. We're not being sensitive to their situations. We're not being loving. We're not doing anything that we're supposed to do because we got to get what we got to say out of our mouths. And the word said, now he could have easily defended himself, mm -hmm. easily himself. When he went to the cross, going carrying his uh, his cross to Golgotha, to being in the courts with them, trying to figure out what to do with him, he could have easily opened his mouth when Satan was tempting him in the forest. But he did not open his mouth because his gentleness was yielded. He he was yielded. He was yielded to his gentleness, and gentleness is what we need. And stop trying to convince people of our opinion being correct. Cause it's not always correct. Well, I, f I feel like a lot of times we, we try to, we try to die publicly and we haven't died. Privately. Oh my God. Help us Lord. You know, we want to, we want to appear to, to be something yes. else. So we want to appear yes. that we, that we, that we've died yes. publicly mm -hmm. and we haven't mm -hmm. died privately. And what I mean by that is the Gethsemane experience. Mm, thank you Lord. He didn't have a bunch of fanfare around when, when he was going through the Gethsemane experience. He had some chosen people that were there. That's right. Now, did they get to witness everything that was said and done? No, but they were there, but they didn't get to witness the exchange uh, that was going on. Yes. And so he died uh, privately before he died publicly. publicly. Man. If he never would have, if he, if the Gethsemane experience never would have happened, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that there would have been a cross experience. Amen. So he had to die privately. You and I need to die Lord privately before Lord. going out and appearing that we've died publicly. And I believe that's why we make such a mess of things because we haven't died privately mm. and we get out in public supposing to be something mm. and we, we, we just mess it up. With our words, because we haven't died, really we're supposed yes. to be dying daily. Mm, my God, daily, not here and there, not every other month, but daily, not daily, to die. daily. He no processes us. Daily, God. we should be dying. Daily, it should be less of us and more of God. Mm, thank you, daily, Lord. on a daily. Second Timothy twenty-four, uh, two and twenty-four says, "And the Lord's servant, uh, you, you and I, mm -hmm. the Lord's servant, must not be quarrelsome." Mm -hmm. But kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents, his opponents with gentleness. Now that's from the ESV. Uh, patiently enduring evil. Mm. You know that's not many of us. We, not we're, we're not going to patiently endure much of anything. Not not a hangnail or uh, not much of anything. But it says patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents. With gen his opponent mm, his with opponents, gentleness, your enemies, his opponent with gentleness, your enemies, glory to God. The ones that don't, the ones that don't like what you're doing, my, 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 the ones that don't appreciate you, yes. the ones that have misused you and abused you and yes. done things to you. We are to treat them with correcting his opponents with gentleness, with gentleness. With gentleness. So, even in correction, mm -hmm. we are to be gentle. Mm -hmm. Even in correction, we're supposed to be be able to be humble and in and give correction and be gentle with our words. How many of us can say that we've corrected gently? How many of us can say that we've yielded? How many of us can say that we are being the best we can be mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. to treating people correctly? There is a lot of lessons in the word how it was taught in the New Testament, love my brother as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Teach and correct as you love yourself. So would you want somebody to say, oh, you're not doing that right. You're not saying that right. Would you want somebody to tell you that or be over you as an adult saying that and trying to correct you that right. way? We, we have to be so very careful about pastors Elders, leaders, apostle, what you call them, double bishops, whoever you want to call yourself, whatever, whatever vernacular you want to use, you yourself have to be careful how you shepherd the people. You are the shepherd of that flock. 
They're God's people, but he put you in charge of them. And you have to be gentle with your actions, with your words, with your correction. We've pastored before. I know that it can be hard. I know that it can be rough sometime. And you're like, these people sometimes are so hard headed. You can imagine what Moses had to go through, what Joshua went through, how they had to lead these people. Mm -hmm. But we as pastors, leaders, whatever you want to call yourself, gentleness is required in correction. If God, if the Lord himself walking on the earth can do it, you have to be able to do it. You got to yield to that. You got to replace your will for his so that you can be gentle in your words and correction. Well, I, th I think when it, when, when it comes to the, to the you, church Lord. setting, you know, what, what, what's on the head rolls down to the people. Amen. Um, I believe, you know, that the pastor should be the, the, the first example of what gentleness is. Yes. Uh, but so many times, you know, I've seen pastors wanting a strong arm and, mm -hmm. you know, they want to rule with, a, with, an, with an iron fist. Man. And that's what that's not what God has called us to do. We, he call, he's calling us to lead the flock, mm -hmm. not rule the flock. Right. And I have Isaiah 40, 11 talks about the, the shepherd leading the flock yeah. and being gentle for Isaiah 4, 40 and 11 says he will feed his flock like a shepherd which means he'll make sure that they have a place to eat, plenteous mm -hmm. place to mm -hmm. eat. He will gather the lambs with his arm. He'll go around and make sure they're where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. He will make sure that you over here and not over there. That means we as shepherds need to be checking on our people. We need to see, especially in this time mm -hmm. that we're dealing in with COVID and people not returning to the uh, worship house, we need to be checking. So he goes around the shepherd, walks around and makes sure that his sheep are where they're supposed to be. And he carries them in his bosom. If they get hurt, if they're whining, if they're crying, he's trying to figure out what's wrong with them. He'll take them off to himself. Now, now, now the first, the first, one of the one of the main jobs of a shepherd or slash pastor is to protect. Protect, and that's what he does. It's to protect, man, man. It's to protect, not Men. to rule over, mm -hmm. uh, not to make sure that they're submitted to you, right. But to protect, you're supposed to watch for the wool. That's right. And it says, and gently lead those who are with young. Mm -hmm. So they're the most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So we need to be gentle with the most vulnerable yeah. as leaders. And I know we're talking about leaders and I know we're talking about pastors right now, kind of veered to the, but that is our job. We well, that's, are the so, shepherd. that's so important we're the shepherd. For, for those in leadership because yes. uh, gotta be a pastor, for those that are in leadership though. You don't, yeah. because we all we we all to a certain extent are leaders. Yes, and we all should be modeling this. But but those that are actually in uh, the leadership of the church, mm -hmm. I think sometimes you know this is missed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and 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 a lot of times, out of ourselves, out of yeah, our own yeah, out of yeah. our own feelings, instead of pastoring Man, them say as that. their God's say that. people. Yes, yes, those people belong to God. Yes, yes, they go to your church, and yes, they have shook your hand or sat in the chair or whatever they have done mm -hmm. at your church. But those are God's people. No matter what your opinion is about them, they belong to God. When they open their mouths and they say, "I accept Him as my." savior mm -hmm. they belong to god and we are to pastor and lead them as so we cannot be leading them with uh unkind words and being lords and being taskmasters we have to lead them with gentleness that is part of our walk our personal walk mm -hmm. as well as being a leader and and jesus was a leader disciples were a leader did they do everything right at all the time no they did not but they had a gentle leader at the time he needed to correct he would correct at the time he needed to love and encourage he would do that so we have to follow suit as saved people of god not just pastors i don't want to keep talking about them but we're talking about everyone Everyone that is following Christ, we have to follow yeah. the same model. Be a shepherd in your home. You are the shepherd at your house. So if you're at oh. your house hooping and hollering, and then they see you at church and you, oh, geez, can't get above a whisper, something's wrong. Well, just, oh, sorry. Something's well, just, wrong. Well, just, well, the men the men that took, took his son uh, to Jesus after he had taken him to the disciples, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus didn't go off on the disciples. No. He never did. He still he still modeled what they should have done. Mm -hmm. Amen. And like I'm saying, so many times I think we we miss that as pastors. We're we're 
we're we're we're supposed to be that model. Mm. We're supposed to model gentleness. Mm. I mean, just uh, just uh, as that. Yeah. I mean, just that's a good it's, example. It's, it's it's so important, man. It's so important. Yes. So, uh, Galatians six one says, "Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression." And this is from the ESV. It says, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Mm -hmm. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be, be tempted. tempted. So we are to restore yes. in a spirit of, of gentleness. gentleness. Not I told you so. Mm -hmm. Not I told you so. My but God. in a spirit of gentleness. My God. And, keeping, and keeping in mind, uh, you know, that... It's, it's could very well be be you. Mm. So restore him, my God. her, in the same manner that you would want somebody to restore you. Yes. My God. Yeah. Mm, my gentleness. God. Gentleness. Gentleness. James 4 and 10. This is the effect of being gentle. Mm -hmm. It says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. He will. He will do he will. the work. Not you, not you lifting yourself up. Well, I did so and so for this person, and I was so nice to them. And I went by and dropped off this, and I went by and gave them a piece of money, as the old school folks used to say. <laughs> um, I went by and sat with them. He said he will lift you up. He will. Being gentle is a part of our walk. Mm -hmm. I know we don't talk about these parts of the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. We talk about love and joy and peace. We talk about these, but these attributes that you are to have kind of glanced over. We have to walk in all of them. We have to be we have to be able to walk in all of them. Glad to see you tonight, Evangelist um and uh Evangelist Pump and Jennifer and Candace. We're still praying for you. Glad to see you. Thank you for joining us, Pastor uh, Plump. And um, I'm not really sure who else. I can't see the rest of the names, but we are so glad to see you on tonight. And Tanya Hunter, thank you for being here. We still got time to like and share. We got some more to share. So go and tell somebody that we are on. Thank you for being here. James 4 and 10 is the effects of being gentle. He will lift you up. Humble yourself and he will lift you up. Jesus yielded for us. Mm-hmm. He took the stripes for us. He died on the cross for us. He was on the cross and said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That wasn't just to the soldiers. That wasn't just to no, the people just, that was around. It was just to sound good. <laughs> no, that was for us. It was for us. He saw down the line saying, forgive them for they know not what they do to me mm -hmm. and to you. They know not what they do. So his gentleness was even showing on the cross. His love showed on the cross, being tortured, all of that. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just talking to the disciple. I mean, he wasn't talking just to the soldiers that were around and the and the priest that had called him into judgment, and called him in the courts. They said, no, we, we don't want take send Barabbas, release Barabbas. We'll take him. He didn't say a word. Not one word in his gentleness. I mean, could you could you could you be Hallelujah. gentle in, 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 in thank you, Lord, in knowing someone's going to betray you mm. as Judas, mm. yet tell him to hurry up and do what he needs to do? <laughs> Amen. Amen. But see, if we were if we were so me, preoccupied with our purpose as Jesus was. We could tell him, go ahead and betray us mm -hmm. because Jesus knew what the fallout would be. He knew what he he knew that by by Judas betraying him, that he would become that seed Jesus. that would produce many sons many coming sons. to him. Yes. So go ahead and betray. Go me. ahead. Go ahead and betray. Me. Ahead. Do what you need to do and do it quick. Yes. Because this seed, this seed is going to produce mm -hmm. in a way that no other seed will. My God, and this is this is and this is what we need to understand. Yes, we're going to be betrayed. Yes, we're going to be talked about. Yes, we're going to be lying. Jesus. But you go ahead and do that because go those ahead. those seeds. My God, those seeds. And how I didn't understand that when I was younger in Christ. Oh my! How I didn't understand. I didn't understand it in Christ. How could you let these things happen to me? How could you let these people do me like this? And, and that's say where, our, that's about where me? our focus stops at. Yes, because it's me. It's about me, right. me, me. But it's more than just me. Now <laughs> I know 
the light bulb has gone on. Now I know it's more than just me. Mm -hmm. What people see me do is going to bring them in to Christ. <laughs> How I react, <laughs> what I say, what I do oh is my. going to bring them into Christ, mm -hmm. not to me, but to him. But if I would have known that when I was younger and understood the word more when I was younger, my goodness, what a witness I could have been and saved, maybe possibly uh, save, <laughs> save someone's life through my witness <laughs> and they would be delivered. But we have to realize that he did it on the cross. They walked on the earth, did it on the cross, and then he did it with us in mind. With he didn't just mind. stop at the cross. It didn't just stop at the resurrection. It didn't stop when he showed up to um, to Peter's house, uh, to, to the house, and they were having church. Right. And they're like, I don't recognize who that is. And those are the same people that he, Simon was like, you got to show me your hands because <clears> I saw you on the cross. I saw you. I saw what they did to you. Hallelujah. You got to show me. And so how many times have we missed an opportunity to show people who God is? Show us, mm -hmm. show people who God is through your gentleness, through your words, through your uh, kindness, through your love, <coughs> through your love, your joy and peace that we've talked about. You have a responsibility when you open your mouth and you ask him to come into your heart. You have a responsibility for others. How many people, others have, how many people have you turned away because you weren't gentle? Mm. You weren't gentle enough. My God. How many people? Gentle with your words. No, no. I'm fine. Right. How many people have you turned away just because you weren't gentle enough? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You weren't gentle enough to show the love of Christ. Yes. With your words. Yes. How many? A lot of times. Uh, people coming to Christ can 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 be made or broken by your ability to extend the love of Christ extend. through your being your being willing to be gentle. gentle. And as I said earlier, uh, the beginning of that that definition was being uh, flexible yes. and understanding. Yes. Are you are you willing to be flexible? Are you willing to be understanding? Mm. Are you willing to be thoughtful? My with God. other folks' situations and circumstances. Thank you, Lord. Are you willing? Are you willing on tonight? Mm. No. Because I want I want to remind you, somebody was gentle enough My to God. slow down and take time and listen to you and pray you through. Yes. No. And so we have to, we need to pay it forward by doing that same thing. Mm -hmm. I, I know maybe they've been saved five years. Maybe you think that they should have gotten it to get uh together by now. Who's to say that though? But hey, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Who's to pass that joke? How many, how many times did you fall down doing the same thing? Amen. How many times? No Amen. one judged you. Amen. So now, just because they aren't where you think they should be, yes. You know, you 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 don't want to pick them up for church anymore. Oh my. You don't want to call them. Uh, no you know, because the maybe they still have a problem with smoking. You know, you've written them all. Mm -mm. Mm. Where's the gentleness? Where's the gentleness on tonight? Where is it? Where's the gentleness on tonight? Where is it? And my, <clears throat> and what a time to be gentle. What a kind, what a time to be kind. How many people oh can you bring to Christ at this moment? People are feeling down and out. They're feeling left alone. They're feeling like no one cares. Um, I don't have a job. I don't have money. I don't have, you know, the support that I used to have. My friends left. They have died. My parents mm -hmm. have died. My, uh, you know, my church is not open, so I can't go to church or my church has oh, closed. God. Do you know how many churches have closed now? They were closing before COVID, but they're closing at a rapidly more, pay, uh, a more rapid pace yeah. at this moment yeah. during this season <clears throat> in the last two years because People are couldn't return to the church or whatever circumstances they are. So there are people that are hungry for God. And what a way to bring them to the cross, bring them to the feet of Jesus. It is our time to stand in our resolve, what we've been talking about this month, and show gentleness, love, 
joy and peace to the ones that are around us, the ones that experience us, the ones that are connected to us. We have to yield. We need to be willing to yield. Yes, she may not, she may curse you out when you mention God, but you still have to be gentle with your words. You still have to be gentle with your actions. You can't tell I'm going to knock your head off if you talk to me that way. I'm not going to stand here and let you talk to We cannot be that way. And yes, it is difficult. I take it from experience. It can be very difficult, but we have a response Responsibility, and we got to stand in our responsibility. Now, Ephesians 4 2 says, With all Thank humility and gentleness, mm -hmm. with patience, bearing with one another in love, with all humility and gentleness. Amen. So, we that means that we need to be strategic with how we handle people with our words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says, With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Mm -hmm. So, do you, do you, do you? Uh, know how to handle people properly with your word. You know, I, I've seen so many people that were saved, um, you know, just fly off the handle with the word and just say anything they want. They want and and people write anything. it off and say, oh, that's that's, that's, just, that's just her. Mm -hmm. That's just how she is. That's not salvation. Well, you know, if you're wounding people, you got sheep laying all over the all over the all over the floor. Mm -hmm. How 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 can that be of, of God? Mm -hmm. Man. That's just that's just you. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is, it's just you, mm -hmm. and that part of you needs needs to change. Mm -hmm. It's not okay that you just handle people any kind of way and go off and say and do any kind of thing that you please because you think you can. Right. We I, have to be careful with with how we handle people with our words. I've had that experience. Yes. I had to be. Um, I had to be gentle. I did have someone come to me. Um, about something they didn't like that I did. Hmm. Um, and I did you get them told? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I did not get them told. And that was that was growing. That was growth. Yeah. That was growing because I was always the type, you know, I I see you coming mm -hmm. and I know I, I know I already know what I'm going to say. I already know what angle I'm gonna come and I'm gonna talk to you so bad that you don't have nothing else to say after I get done. So when this person came to me and said they didn't appreciate what I had done, it was a time for me to either I was going to be Tammy or I was going to be saved Tammy. And the Lord allowed me to be that saved Tammy that I actually was professing in front of them. And when I did that, it made me realize, hey, that's some growth right there for you. That's some maturity right there for you. That's some me using my gentle words. That's my reaction. That's some that's some stuff right there, Tammy. You did it. You did it. And you did it because you are allowing God to scrub you. You're allowing God to scrub your heart and to change your mind about situations and reactions and things. You're allowing him to do it. I'm replacing my will. I'm taking, letting him take my will. Mm -hmm. And I'm letting it be his will. Because Glory to God. The, the way I, if I would have reacted, I could have turned that person away from God. Mm -hmm. I could have, it would have been me that turned them away, not God, but they would have blamed God for it and me. Mm -hmm. But I, it was my opportunity to be a witness at that moment. And boy, oh boy, can it be hard? Yes. We're not talking like it's not reality. We, you know, people think that's not reality. That's not real. I'm not saying that we don't mess up. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that we need to take the opportunity to grow in gentleness. Well, you can always do better. You can always do always better. You can, do always, better. you can almost, always do better yes. in how you handle things. Yes. Um, you know, as, I, as, I, as, I said, as I've said on here before, um, you know, the incident um, with the cashier at 7-Eleven. Um, now she she just completely went off on me, and it was actually the uh, the person that was in front of me. I, I can't even remember exactly what was done, but the person in front of me had done something, but she was directing it at me, and so I exchanged words with her. And as I said, um, I couldn't get away with it, and God told me that I had to go back and apologize. No. And I did that, and she bawled and and told me that you know no one has ever come back and apologized. Yes, I mean I didn't cuss her out or anything. But I just told her, you know, at that moment, I'm like, you're not going to be talking to me like that. Mm -hmm. And I was just all in my feelings, mm -hmm. all in my feelings. Um, but I had to go back and apologize. Mm -hmm. And 
when you are growing and you're maturing, oh God, you me. know, God will get you to a place where you can't get away with, with things any longer. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's not just okay to go to, to act and say and do anything, mm -hmm. those things that aren't pleasing in his sight. Mm -hmm. Now, now, now there was a time I would have never thought about yes, that yes. twice. Yes. But because, of, because at that moment I was trying to become everything uh, that I knew God was calling me glory, to be, it to wasn't God. okay to glory have an exchange with Jesus. someone when I was supposed to be modeling Christ. Thank you, God. It wasn't okay. Mm, and hallelujah. we all need to get to that place where it's not okay. I don't care if it's a family member. Not I don't care if it's member. a co-worker. I don't right. care if it's a, a if it's a church member. Yes. You you can't you can't be free to be going off saying what you want to say and acting how you want to act. Can't. Not when you not when your when your confession is Christ, and that's what the be. Holy Ghost is for. Oh my! The Holy Ghost is that's what the Holy Ghost oh is for. So if you don't have him, you better get him because you can't make it with what we're talking about. Takes the uh, the Holy Ghost to be residing in you. Yeah, it has to be your guide. It's got to be your compass. It's got to be your conscious. Pastor uh, describes him as your supersized conscience. Yeah. So it's beyond your thoughts. It's beyond your will. He is there to lead you, guide you, give you direction. If you don't have it, you don't have the gift of the Holy Ghost. You need to be asking for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You need to be fasting and tearing for the Holy Ghost because you cannot do these things that we're talking about without him because our conscience is a human uh conscious and we'll do what we want to do oh my and take so we have to hold, we have to have the holy ghost we have to <clears> have him i know people want to say the holy spirit i say the holy ghost Holy Ghost. so that's because that's what the word is saying and it does say holy spirit um people do say that but i'm saying that you have to have that companion Glory you cannot God. do this walk without him yes we do talk about the holy ghost mm -hmm. yes we do believe that Thank he is God. our compass yes we do believe that he guides us so if you you have to, I don't care if you said you've been saved 25 years, 50 years. If your Holy Ghost don't kick in and tell you that you didn't say that right, mm -hmm. you didn't act right, that wasn't gentle how you acted and reacted, mm -hmm. then you need to go back to the altar. And what they say, get between the porch and the altar, mm -hmm. that's where you need to be. And I know people will watch this that probably been saved 30 years and say, oh, she don't know what she's talking about. Let me tell you, I've been in this in this walk a long time and i've seen people save that long that have hurt people that have damaged people and they felt like they should have taken it and i'm like, you mm -hmm. need to take it because i've been saved so and so and so and so well how you're acting mm -hmm. is not god and how what you're saying is not god so i can't take your word and say oh that's what well, that's how god wants her to act well it, she it, acts. well it in fact it in fact Thank it does god. take god it does it does take god it does there's no goodness we don't have any we we don't My have God. that amount of goodness on the inside. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Because if, if it was just left up to me, I never would have went back to apologize. Mm, never. Thank you. Exactly. But, be, but because of the spirit of God uh, that's living on the inside of me and growing on the inside Glory of me, name, it just it was not okay that I that I that I did that. Thank you, God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. When you think about the possibility of the damage. Uh, that could have been done by somebody else seeing me act like that. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's worth my, my going back and apologizing. Oh, what if she would have got on Winning in Prayer, been on Facebook and saw Winning in Prayer? And she's like, that's that guy. My that's that God. guy that did yes. me like that. So yes. you got, I mean, I'm telling you, there is nothing that we can get away with yes. at this point in our lives as being saved folks. We got to make sure that every uh, I is dotted and every T is crossed. Uh, Robin says, I just went through that and I turned around and told her I was sorry for the way I just act, uh, acted, acted act. mm -hmm. and just, I just got done praying. Amen. Amen. Growth, Growth. Robin. Yeah. Growth. Yeah. Growth. Growth, maturity, accept that as being growth. Mm -hmm. Because again, if you don't have growth, then what do we, we, we can't be here. We can't be where we're at right now. What we're teaching about, you got to have growth. You got to take it and, and live with it and eat it and digest it and, and uh, examine yourself and say, hey, okay, well, I'm not doing it this way. I got to do it better this way. And so as you grow, 
things become much easier. Yeah. Stuff becomes much easier when people say things and shady stuff to you and you feel like, you know, I, I don't feel that I got to get you no more. You know, guys, listen, I don't I don't Thank ever want to come off as a, a finished product yes. or or come off as if um, I don't I don't have any uh, uh, go through any tests and trials. Jesus. And I don't ever mess up. Jesus. Man, listen, it's, it's my messing up. That, that gives me the ability to, to, to sit before you and yes. declare uh, what the word is saying. It's Hallelujah. all of my mess ups yes. that now uh, gives me the experience and the Hallelujah. authority to stand, to sit, and to tell you yes. how good God is. Yes. And, and you know, you one, of, one of my pet peeves is that Hallelujah. I don't like pastors that come off squeaky clean mm, mm. if you can't show me your wounds mm, if you can't take your mm. towel off as jesus did and expose you, how am i ever gonna have enough oh hope to know that i, I can, can make it and i can make it and i can mm. show me that you fell down you got up hallelujah show me that you've made mistakes and then were able to correct those yes show me hallelujah show me yes don't preach from such lofty heights yes. and leave me without hope yes. or leave me without the expectation that I can change yes. and Hallelujah. get it right. Thank Listen, you, I'll always tell you that I've messed up. Mm -hmm. I'll always tell you how I can go, how you can go about doing things, not because I'm, I'm, I'm perfect, mm. but because I've messed up myself and God has, has been gracious enough to me. Uh, to allow me to get it right. Yes, and how Glory I to learned, God. And Glory how you to God. learned from it, and you can give the experience to someone else and say, "Yes, I know you're there. This is where I was. I was there too, and this is where I am now. Yes, yes, this is where yes. I am now. It is so important for pastors, leaders, church folks to be transparent with people. Yes, people want to see God differently. They want to experience God differently. How we grew up, we grew up as God being the judger all the time and slapping down his hand, and he's gonna jump out and catch you at every <clears> move, <throat> and he's gonna make you do right. He's gonna force himself on you, and we not. And I'm not shaming that at all. I'm thankful. For the foundation that I grew up under and that I have, but I wanted to experience God differently yes. and how I experience him differently is getting in my word and seeing for myself that, oh, okay, so you are the God of love. You are the God that will hide me when I'm hurting. Yes. You are the God will come. You are the God that will come and rescue me. You are the God that will lift up a standard when the enemy comes in to try to infiltrate my life and tear up my life and I'm laid as carnage you are that God. And that's how I knew that my relationship was changing because of the word that I was reading. The growth that I got was from the word, from fasting and praying. I became that God chaser. You got to become a God chaser, not a TV chaser, not what Bishop said chaser, not what my pastor said chaser, not what anybody else or my favorite mother or whoever. You got to be a God chaser chaser you got to chase after this this is what you have to chase after and your prayer life so you got to be able to <clears> take <throat> what you're getting <clears throat> teaching and then apply it to your life thank yeah, you God. tanya says thank the lord for for grace and mercy amen amen man amen. the one for his grace and mercy oh my i don't know where any of us will be amen oh last scripture tonight deuteronomy 32 and 2 it says may May my teachings drop as the rain, mm -hmm. my speech distill as the Hallelujah. dew, Thank like gentle God. rain upon the tender grass and like showers upon the herb. Let me read it to you again. May my teachings drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, like gentle rain upon the tender grass and like showers upon the herb. Mm. Now that now that that verse is is, is uh, uh, mentioning rain mm -hmm. a couple of times. Rain for for grass it gives it everything it needs. Yeah. So for literally literally, your speech should contain everything that that person oh needs uh, for growth, for healing, for restoration, for mm -hmm. repair. Uh, my gentleness it, it, it's a remedy it's a remedy for dif difficulty. And stubbornness. Hallelujah. My my speech, my gentleness. Thank you, God. Should be able to supply you with everything you need for recuperation mm. and restoration. Mm. On tonight. And then I have Job 15 and 11. 
It says, are the consolations of God too small for you? Mm. And the word spoken gently with you? Gently. His word spoken gently. God's words are consoling. They need to make you feel warm and fuzzy on the inside. You know how you get your warm and fuzzy. This is Miss Frida Alexander. Oh, hi, Frida. How are you? God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. God's word should, God's gentleness, it should feel warm and fuzzy. Yes. Our words should make somebody feel warm. You know how you got your favorite blanket or your yes. favorite house shoes or your favorite uh, long sleep pajamas. I think it's cold in Ohio. It's like 56 degrees today. So everybody's putting oh, on their God. warm and fuzzy uh, uh, What's 50, clothes. What's